You know how this works. Um, it's pretty much a session where you teach me stuff, but I pretend to be your interviewer. So Corbin, the project I have for you today, I want you to create a to-do list uh, in React, which is the framework we chose today. I will give you complete freedom over what you want to do. Talk me through what you want to do and what you are going to do and let's get started. Yeah, so what I was thinking is that we could do a, a simple little to do app today where we have the ability to add a task, we can uh, remove a task, and then finally we can edit a task. Sure, that sounds good. And then maybe I'll have you do extra homework for extra credit. Yeah, sounds good. I figure the place that I would start is we are given a, a template, which is pretty similar to the one you might see when you're creating a new React application. But I'm going to go ahead and, and clean that up just a little bit and get rid of some of the files that are in here. So I'm going to get rid of the SVG. Uh, we'll keep the index.css, but we'll make it body margin zero, padding zero. Um, we don't really need the global file. Uh, and then here we can just replace all this with a paragraph tag that says hello, right? So pretty straightforward. Um, I'm noticing that our CSS still seems to be applying some kind of dark mode to the background. So that's easy enough. Let me see where that's coming from. Oh, it's coming from the iframe. Okay. So let's go ahead and change the body background to white just so that we can kind of see what we're working on. There we go. Well, one of the things that I'm thinking about is that while applications like this could use something like Redux, and you know, we could go into our shell and we could do, you know, NPMI Redux. I think that it's going to be a little overkill for an application as simple as this. If we only have one screen that's a to do app, yes, we could use global storage of some kind, but it's usually a feature that I like to add a little bit after having an MVP of some kind. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and decide not to use a global storage system. So instead, what I'm thinking is we can do uh, a use state of to do's set to do's and then we could we could start like a super basic initializer of uh, we'll keep it an array of strings for now so we can say uh, eat sleep play video games because those are the three important ones and then what we can do is we can say to do's dot map list item of to do there we go so this works um, in order to be able to, to simply read off items. Um, ideally, we'd have a key here, right? Um, which I think we're going to do right now. Right, so we'll say ID zero name change that to one, two. So something like this might work where uh, we're, we're having an ID associated with each of the to do items uh, and then we are at, uh, displaying the name, right? Mm -hmm. So now we can go ahead and have like a parent div contains both of these. We can have a button, which is add to do. And then our add to do is going to be to do's and then ID three name item. Oh, and then I need to add the on click. Yeah, there we go. We have one more item that's added when we click add item. Let me try. Yes, that works. All right. So that's the first. Yeah. Uh, First task done, mm -hmm. uh, maybe we want to add a to do that's a bit more specific and maybe add some more right. with distinct IDs, but so far your add to do works. Well, and, and I think that like, this isn't a very particularly helpful button right now, right? Yeah. Like we're not able to type anything into it. We're not able to, to really do much here. So I'm wondering what happens if instead of using a button, we'll use a form and we'll say on submit to eat up prevent default and then we can have an input as a placeholder that says add to do usually placeholders are like the name of it we'll, we'll just say to do name and then we will have a value and then on change here we can have another set state of const to do name set to do name value is going to be set to to do name and then on change it's going to set the to do name like that tell me what you're doing right now i'm i'm not sure i so i see i'm uh i'm making sure that this uh to do name text input is a you're able to type in what the next to do is mm -hmm. right yeah so here if i do test then there we go we're able to add test there and then uh you can type in whatever you want to to add the to do. OK, so that's all right. So that's the function set to do name when you. OK, so every time you type a letter or you change this input field, it calls the set to do name, right? Mm -hmm. OK. 
yeah, which then right. updates const to do name uh -huh. and then is reflected back on the UI with value. Okay. Um, there is still a problem uh, with this implementation, and I think you had mentioned it earlier, where our ID isn't being like incremented. Yes. IDs are really tricky in React to get right because there's like, especially if you're doing server side rendering, there's a mismatch between what can be generated on the server versus what's generated on the client. Um, is it safe to assume that we're only generating things on the client and we're not server side rendering? Of course, yes. Cool. Okay. Uh, in that case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say ID and set ID. Actually, I'm going to start this at three because we already have our, our use state going up to two. Mm -hmm. We're going to say ID, and then we're going to set ID, set to ID plus plus. Cannot assign to ID. Oh, hang on. There we go. So the reason why this works, because um, what used to happen in older versions of React, I think it was before React 17, so React 16, is that when you did a set to do set ID back to back, it would actually re-render twice. Mm -hmm. um, but nowadays in React 17 and 18, um, they are actually batched together. So it only triggers one re-render, even though I'm calling a set in two different places. Okay, just a quick question. Um, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I'll, I know the answer, but uh, just to make sure. Can you tell me what this prevent default means and what it's used for? So why would you mm -hmm. put that there? Yeah, so uh, this add to do. Oh, I'm sorry. I actually need to get rid of it from this button. Um, this add to do is added on top of this on submit, right? Mm -hmm. um, and by default, the submit behavior on a form will actually refresh your browser page um, and it'll prevent any further actions from occurring. Mm -hmm. So if I get if we comment out this line of code and we rerun it and you try to add it to do, you'll notice that it actually blanks out your page and refreshes. Yes, so now this prevent default is just skip the refreshing and keep going the page, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. So now we've managed to edit any kind of, uh, well, sorry, to add any kind of notes with the text we want. Um, so next you put in your readme is, well, removing or editing, which, which one do you want to do first? Uh, let's do removing. I think there's something cathartic about being able to add an <laughs> item and then immediately remove it. Yes, sure. So here what we can do is inside of this list item, I'm going to expand it out a little bit. Uh, I'm going to add a button and we'll say delete. I forgot the syntax for a second. <laughs> so I'm going to be passing in. Oh, that's not auto completing, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pass the ID to an on delete function. Mm -hmm. Right. So this on delete function will accept an ID and then we will set to do's to to do's dot filter is not equal to the current ID. Right. Mm -hmm. So now if I click delete on sleep, it gets rid of it. Nice. I'm just checking that I can add a few more and delete them. Um, but yeah, that appears to be working. Nice. OK, well, yeah. now let's edit maybe. So how do you want to okay. to manage the addition of notes? So I'm thinking that we should have like maybe like an edit state next to each of these items. Right. So we can have an edit button, a delete button. And when you trigger the edit button, it'll toggle on and off which of these you want to edit. Mm -hmm. So we can do button we can say edit and add another on click so we'll have an on edit function and what i'm thinking is that you should only be able to edit one of the to do's at a time mm -hmm. it's kind of what i'm thinking so let's do a const um to do edit id and this can either be a null or a string which is id right yeah so here on edit will be as simple as uh, assigning that. Wait, sorry, right. you're saying the ID is a string? Here I can see it's an... Sorry, int. yes. Yep, you're correct. It's a it's a number. Okay, uh, I just wanted to make sure because I'm not super familiar with uh, React. I'm just watching the show right now, but uh, if I can help, help catch a bug or two and give a yeah. few ideas, uh, it's good. I'm used to like database calls where you have like a UUID v4 mm -hmm. or something that generates for um, your IDs. Yeah. So that was my mistake. Mm -hmm. um, and then what we can do is we can say fragment. So, what's so a fragment? that comes from React. What, what's a so fragment? fragment is really interesting in React. So like in the DOM, you might have uh, like a div and then an li and then uh, another div, right? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. But you want to wrap like here. Let, let me actually create a new file. So inside of here, uh, what we could have is in the DOM, we could have uh, a UL and then underneath a UL, we would expect to see an LI, right? Mm -hmm. So what if you wanted to add in like a for loop, right? Mm -hmm. Or a map and you wanted to render two different LIs here, right? Like mm -hmm. for each item in the list, you want to render two individual list items. Yep. Well, you could do something like this. Okay. Right? Yes. But then the problem is that now you have a div in between your unordered list and yeah. your list items. I right? see. Yeah. Which which isn't allowed in React or isn't allowed in HTML. So instead, what you can do is you can use a fragment and then the fragment like disappears and doesn't actually show up in the DOM. Okay. But you can use it to act as a parent to other elements. Okay. So it will unpack all the th stuff that's into the fragment and just mm -hmm. kind of concatenates all those return values contained in the fragments, right? Yeah, basically. Okay. So, okay. I didn't, yeah. I didn't so we, know that. Well, the more you know. So what I'm thinking is that we have a to do name, but if there isn't uh, but if we're editing it, right? So we can say fragment if to do edit ID is equal to to do dot ID, then we will show then we will show the name. Otherwise, if we are editing it, then we should expect to see an input with a value of to do dot name. That's not going to work, but let's at least see if this renders properly. Yeah. Okay. So now if we click the edit button, we can actually see a text input with the name assigned. Mm -hmm. But you'll notice that if you try to type in that text input, it doesn't work. Yeah, because there is no unchange, right? Right, right. Nice. <laughs> I'm, I feel so like let's... I'm being the one. I, I'm I'm the one being interviewed. <laughs> so here, we can say we can say to do edit name, and this one will be a string. Yeah, that's fine. I'm thinking about like potentially merging these together into like to do edit, and that could work, and is arguably a nicer way of doing this. I'm gonna keep it as is for now. Yeah. Uh, if we need to refactor later on, we definitely mm -hmm. can. OK, uh, so what I will do is I will say uh, set to do edit name is assigned to now. Nah, let's go ahead and merge them together. I'm realizing that this is going to be a little bit of a headache. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, that's what I was planning on making you do next anyway. So. Oh, OK. <laughs> so instead of null or number, it's going to be null or to do type, which there is no to do type, but I'm just using it as a shorthand in, in my memory. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we're going to pass a to do and we're going to say spread the to do on the edit and then on edit, we're going to pass the entire to do. And one thing that, that we can actually do here is instead of duplicating this if statement twice, we can create a variable to do edit item dot id equals to do dot id. Now we can say if it's not editing, otherwise if it is editing, then to do edit item dot name on change will accept e. We will say set to do edit name or edit item. I'm actually going to extract this out to a function on to do edit item name change. <laughs> That's a nice function. It's a little yeah. Yeah, it's a little long, but it's per it's descriptive, which I mm -hmm. think is more important. Yes. So let's pass in e and name. So const new name is e dot target dot value. And the name is set to new name. Uh, I seem to have some kind of error. Uh, I cannot access property ID. If oh, oh, I need to add a question mark here. There we go. So why is that that you need the question mark there? So to do edit item may be null. Oh, yeah. Right? So if it's a null, it's cannot access property. OK, I get get it. Right, right. So this question mark specifically says um, if this is null, stop there. Don't continue any further. All right. So here we can edit sleep. We can say sleep one, two, three. Ah, but there's no way to exit edit mode right yeah. now. So let's say if we're not editing, then go ahead and have a button that says edit. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if we aren't, if we are editing, then we'll say done and our on edit will be passed with null. Our on edit needs to change a little bit because otherwise it would try to spread the null operator, which won't work. Mm -hmm. But now it appears that it's not saving what we just input. Mm. Yes, true, true. So now we need to change this uh, on edit null. We need to say on done edit. Mm -hmm. So you can say on done edit. We're going to do both of those at some point. We'll end it with a null so that we're cleaning things up. And we will say set to do's to do's dot map 
if to do dot id is equal to this item dot id i'm going to add a question mark there just to be safe mm -hmm. then to do then return that otherwise return that we need to return in here there we go that works yes nice so i was looking at your code uh well your main page i see there's mm -hmm. um well here you're checking if uh, can you see what i'm highlighting yeah yep. so here i can see you're doing this if we are editing uh, well if if we are not editing that bullet then another condition then another one and another one do you have a yeah. way of merging them so like both of those not editing and both of those uh, which are when editing are under the same kind of condition we could i'm going to actually argue that we shouldn't okay. which is probably an unpopular opinion so i i know in programming concepts there's something called dry which is don't repeat yourself mm -hmm. right um and we definitely are repeating ourselves here right yes but I think that the likelihood of adding more buttons is going to increase, right? Like, like as a feature goes on, you might want to drop down arrow. You might want to be able to right click in a menu item. Like there's a lot of different stuff you might want to add here. Mm -hmm. And I think that by having these items separate, it allows you to keep like a, a level of separation between those items. Now, what we could do, one, one thing that we could do that would actually be fairly straightforward mm -hmm. is we could say, do this, otherwise do that, right? Mm -hmm. That's something we could do. Um, but overall, I think that that's as far as I'd want to merge them. I wouldn't want yeah. to merge all of and that together. That, that ternary for readability, I don't really like that. I don't like it either. Yeah. yeah. So let's let's um, go back to the original code. It's yeah, it's good. I I understand your argument. So, um, yeah, um, let's let's keep it like this. It's uh, okay. All right. Uh, well, we've managed to create the basic to do list app. Uh, I like it. A little ugly though. Sure. Yes. So here's what I suggest we do. We switch channels. So the coding game video will end right about now, and uh, we'll continue making the list better on CoderPad. So so what. I'm thinking what we could do on your channel would be well making the CSS a bit uh, well less empty to make the, the right. page uh, more beautiful then perhaps adding some persistence so when we refresh the page it stays that way and it doesn't uh, reset the page um, and maybe a few other funny things that we may have some fun doing so thank you Corbin um, and we'll see you on your channel all right sounds good see you there